you. So if you would go ahead and join us as we sing. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? And our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. And our God is the lamb, the lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. And every knee will bow before him. So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. So who can stop the Lord Almighty? And our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power. Fighting our battles, and every knee will bow before him. And our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? And our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power. Fighting our battles, and every knee will bow before him. And our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before him. darkness we were waiting without hope and without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt Oh, be 
even in your suffering, do so to the other side, knowing this is our salvation, Jesus for our take and die. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand, and everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations, so why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. And I've still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. So I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength Cause I built my life on Jesus And he's never let me down He's faithful in every season So why would he fail now? He won't, he won't, he won't fail, he won't fail, he won't, he won't. He won't fail, he won't fail. Rain came when blue, but my house was built on you. 
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I pray that everybody's doing well this morning. Well, thank you. Yes, I love it. I love it. One person is doing well this morning. They're winning. They're winning. We're winning. Uh, speaking of winning, it is Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, I'm not preaching a Super Bowl message about football, anyway. Anytime we speak about Jesus, it's Super Bowl, right? And so, uh, bear with me. This morning, I know that you probably got big plans, some of you. Uh, food and family and friends are probably uh, coming over. But let's not waste an opportunity to worship, to praise, and to, to learn more about our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? If you're a guest here this morning, we are so thankful that you're here with us. Uh, we pray that God uh, blesses uh, your time here and that you receive exactly what it is uh, that he has for you this morning. Uh, thankful for our online family as always and those that join us uh, through that avenue. We are thankful, thankful uh, for that. And so uh, let's not waste any time. Let's jump right into, right into this and, and just uh, to remind us of what we've been talking about or maybe you haven't had the opportunity to be in, in, uh, with us in any part of our Shine series uh, let's uh, remind ourselves or bring you up to speed of what we've been preaching about, what we've been teaching, uh, what we've been talking about. In, in week one of our series, Shine, we, we went all the way back to the beginning of the book in Genesis where, where God talked about light and how he looked upon the earth and, and uh, he, he shined his face upon the face of the earth to, to bring light. We talked about the significance of light and, and how we can only reach our full illumination how we can only be the true lights that God created us to be if his face is shining on us is if his face is shining on us we talked about how Jesus is the one true light of the world and how we're to be reflections of him as that one true light in the in the second week we talked about how we cannot let our imperfections stop us from shining we talked about uh, uh, David and, and, and the things that he did throughout his 
his life. The Bible describes him as, as a man after God's own heart, but yet he was not perfect. He had imperfections. He committed sins. But thankfully, we serve a God that when we cry out to him in repentance, when we desire forgiveness, we have a God that forgives us of our imperfections. And, and the enemy wants to try and stop us from shining because of our imperfections. And so don't ever let your imperfections stop you from shining. We're to be like the morning sun, awakening people to a new life, new possibility, a limitless future in relationship with Jesus Christ. We are called to arise and shine. We are called to arise and shine. And then last week we talked about, we talked about the transformative power of light. There's an amazing transformation that takes place uh, uh, and awaits us in the arms of our Savior, Jesus Christ. This transformation is not just mere change. I can change my clothes, I can change this, that, or the other, but, but in our relationship and the transformative power of Jesus in our lives, it's so much deeper than just change. It's a radical rebirth, a radical rebirth. It's, it's moving from, from uh, uh, it's a metamorphosis that touches or should touch every aspect of our lives. And we talked about how sometimes we struggle with, with asking God to touch every aspect of our lives. There's these little parts of our lives that we like to keep ours. That, that we know that either God wants us to go a little bit deeper or sometimes He wants us to cut out certain things in our lives. And we as God's people sometimes struggle with asking God to be a part and to touch every aspect of our lives. Every aspect of our lives. It's a shift from darkness to light, from death to life, from being lost to being found. From being lost to being found. And, and we looked at one of the most dramatic transformations recorded in the Bible, the conversion of Saul uh, uh, of Tarsus, uh, uh, a zealous persecutor of the early church, uh, responsible for imprisonment and death of early Christians, the transformation from Saul to Paul, a passionate preacher of the gospel, going from dark to one of the brightest lights that's ever shown uh, in the name of the gospel of Jesus Christ, a true, true light. And so in this final week, we're going to conclude this morning with our, our series Shine, but that doesn't mean we stop shining. Hopefully this was just a launching point. Hopefully this was just an ignition point, a spark to help you launch into your shining for 2024. But we're going to look at what it means to be the light of the world. What does it mean to be the light of the world? So if you turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, we're going to begin reading in verse 13. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Have you ever heard the phrase, that person is the salt of the earth. The salt of the earth person. What, is that, what does that mean to you? It's okay to tell me what that means to you. That, that, that was a question. That was a question. What, is that, what does that mean to you? Say that again. Well seasoned, okay. Mature. To me, it's a person that's wholesome. A person that, that is going to be there for you no matter what. A person that is, that is hardworking. A person that is well-grounded, stable, right? Some of you may have other things that you could, you could add to that. And so Jesus here, uh, before we get into to verse 13, at the beginning of chapter 5, he gives us, if you've been around church at all, if you studied uh, chapter 5 of Matthew at all, he gives us what's called the Beatitudes, or, or what I call the blessings. The blessings, and, 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 he, and he shares with us, you know, blessed are the poor in spirit. Uh, blessed are those who mourn, for, um, um, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And he goes on and tells us, here are some blessings. And he's, he's just finished laying out how his, his, his blessings for people that demonstrate the qualities that God looks for in his followers. And yes... God does look for certain qualities in his followers. There are certain things that God wants his followers to do, to say, to act like, to participate in. And, and in, in before verse 13, 
Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit share those. Here, here's what those characteristics look like. Here's, here's what those qualities look like. And if, you, and if you exude those, if you shine those, if you will, there's blessing for you in those qualities. In those qualities. And so he had just finished laying out those things right before this passage of Scripture here in verse, uh, verse 13. And, and he continues to talk about how his followers should live. He gives us two metaphors. Two metaphors for how his disciples should live. What's a disciple? A little quicker. A follower of Jesus Christ. A follower of Jesus Christ. Hopefully we have a room full of disciples. If you're not a follower of Jesus Christ, you're in the right place. Because you have an opportunity this morning to move from darkness into light. Or from not being in relationship with Jesus Christ to a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so um, a disciple is a follower of Jesus Christ. And he gives us here, starting in verse 13, these two metaphors of how disciples, followers, people that are in relationship with Jesus Christ, how we should live. Those two, those two are salt and light. And so we're going to begin with salt this morning. And as I was praying and, and God was laying on my heart the hashtag for this, hashtag shine, you know, I, I'd read this passage of Scripture many times, and, and the key verse to, to God's vision for, for us as a church this year is in verse 16, and we'll get to that. But I was thinking about salt and light, and I just didn't think that hashtag salty Was, was, was the right way to go. But here in verse 13, let's read. Chapter 5 of Matthew, verse 13, it says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under foot of or foot by men. And so we got to look at this first metaphor here of being salt. And, and what an amazing, amazing God we serve. What a gracious God we serve that he instructs us. He tells us how he wants us to live. He doesn't just put us out on a li an island and say, figure it out. No, he gives us his word. He gave us his son. This, this is written in red, so this means this is coming from Jesus, his only begotten son. He doesn't just leave us out on an island to figure it out by itself. He tells us how he desires for us to live. And he uses these, this first metaphor of salt to in, instruct us. Uh, and so here, remember the, the behaviors that, that Jesus is saying, the blessings uh, in the beginning of chapter 5 to, to, to the follower of God is radically different than what the world would tell us and how the world tells us we should behave. God is, is, is always in opposition of the world. The world, and so here he he tells us uh, how we should how we should behave the behaviors, and it's radically different. So, as I was reading that, and as I was thinking, I said, you know, it, it wouldn't be too far fetched to think that because Jesus's followers are to be so different from the world, we agree that, right? Jesus's followers are to be different, and you all are shaking your head. Yeah, you all know that I'm different, radically different. See, <laughs> And so it wouldn't be too far-fetched to think that because Jesus calls us to be different than the world, peculiar, as we follow him, it wouldn't be so far-fetched to think, well, then maybe we should just withdraw from the world. As God's people, maybe it would just be better if we just, you know, built fences around the church and we all just camp out here and but there, there's, there's a term for that, and it's called cult. I'm not sure that's appropriate, right? We can all sit around here and wait on some spaceship to come pick us up with tin foil hats, right? I'm in trouble. I probably just got shut down on the Internet just now, but that's okay. See, that's not, but that's not what God wants. But, that, but, but you can, in reality, I mean, we're supposed to be different. The world is in opposition to us most of the time, in opposition to God's ways most of the time. So, so it wouldn't be too far-fetched to think, well, maybe we should just withdraw from the world. But that is not what Jesus is teaching in this passage of Scripture. In fact, 
Jesus is teaching us and wants and desires for us to be engaged with the world. We're to be in the world, but not of the world. We're not to take on the world's behaviors. We're not to take on the world's behaviors and personality and characteristics. We're to have God's characteristics, Jesus' behaviors, and personality. But we are to engage with the world. We're to, when, you, when you put salt on your food, it, it tastes. There's, it engages the senses. It engages the taste buds. And so Jesus wants us to engage the world, but here's the key to engaging the world, with God's love. Because I've been around Christians and I have, I have to be transparent and honest, I've engaged the world inappropriately at times. Wasn't a whole lot of God's love involved with it. Huh? Am I the only one? Am I the only one that's done that? So the key to this is that we engage the world with God's love. Salt was useful to the people of ancient Palestine uh, for taste, uh, preservation, and, and many other purposes that they used salt for in their, in their time. And so if, if the salt no longer tasted like salt, or it no longer preserved like it was supposed to, or it no longer accomplished whatever purpose it was supposed to accomplish, it was useless. Well, guess what? If I'm in relationship with Jesus and I'm not fulfilling my purpose, and everybody gets hung up on purpose, we'll touch on that in just a second because purpose is very simple. We make it way too hard. We make it way too difficult. But we'll touch on purpose here in just a second. But as a child of God, as a follower of Jesus Christ, I have a purpose. And if I'm not fulfilling that purpose, then guess what? I'm useless. I'm useless in the eyes of God. And, and guess what? I'll take it a little step further. Your family, your family, if your family is not fulfilling because God has a purpose for your family, whatever your last name may be, God has a purpose for you to fulfill. And if you're not fulfilling that purpose, we're wasting our time. If you're sitting here this morning, the purpose of church this morning is to come in here and worship Him in song, to glorify Him in song, to learn more about His Word and apply it to our lives. If we're sitting here this morning and all we're thinking about is the snacks we're going to have at Super Bowl time and who's going to win the Super Bowl, we're, you're wasting your time. You might as well not even have shown up. And so we have a purpose to fulfill, and that's what Jesus is teaching here, is that we cannot lose, lose the purpose. It is useless, and it would be thrown out as waste, here it says in verse, verse 13. So, so God has, Jesus has, the Holy Spirit has a purpose for us. Let's read on in verse 14. Verse 14 says, you are the light of the world, period. You are, and he's talking to his disciples, believers, believers in Jesus Christ. You are the light of the world. This is the next metaphor he uses, and he tells us as his followers, as his, as his brothers and sisters in Christ, that we are the light of the world. That we are the light of the world. Now, we've been talking about this for three weeks, and and most of us know what light does by now. I hope you do. If you haven't, you had not been paying attention. Most of us know what light does. It eliminates darkness. Light eliminates darkness. It allows us to see. And as followers of Jesus Christ, he tells us, you are the light of the world. Well, what are we, what are we uh, uh, defeating? We're defeating the darkness of the world. God looked at it in Genesis chapter 1 and said, we got to get, we got, we got to shine some light on this place. It's not good for them to walk around in the dark. It's not good for us spiritually to walk around in the dark. And so God uses each other. And I'm going to tell you right now, there are tremendous lights in this church that shine light into my life. And I'm thankful for that. And, and, and we should never take it for granted the people, the lights that God places in our lives to shine in our life every single day. Every single day. 
Because I'm going to be honest with you, at least it is for me. It's easier for me to walk in darkness than it is to walk in the light. Some of you may not struggle with that as much as I do. But I struggle with walking in the light and that battle that goes on. Because the enemy is always wanting to pull you back into that darkness. Always wanting to change your thought, your mind, your actions back into that dark place. Back into that dark place. And I struggle with that from time to time. And so, uh, um, but, but Jesus says, you are the light of the world. And I'm thankful for the, those of you that are light into my life that helps me eliminate the darkness. That helps me eliminate the darkness. It allows us to see. No one's ever said, I'm afraid of the light. At least I don't think so. If you're afraid of the light, we've got a whole other problem and a whole other series that we've got to preach on. But I have never heard a child or anyone say, I'm afraid of the light. Dad, turn the light off because I'm afraid of the light. I've never heard that at 10 o'clock at night or 9 o'clock at night when it's bedtime. No, we always say, I'm afraid of the dark. The clear implication of the, the rest of this passage is twofold. And, and let's begin to read that twofold part of the message. It says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. See, we live in a world right now, and it, and it, and it, and it changes. It's, it ebbs and flows. There's moments in time when it's popular to be a Christian. When it's popular and, it, and, it, and it's accepted socially to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And then there's times in which we live right now, we just so happen to live in one. We're a, we're a generation in this time where it's not so popular to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Generally speaking, society speaking. But Jesus says here, and I think the implication is, is quit hiding our faith. Don't hide your faith. And that's, what, that's what shining represents. I'm not going to hide my faith, whether it's popular or unpopular. I don't really care about being popular in the eyes of men or being unpopular in the eyes of men. What I care about, what we desire as God's people, is that we're that city set on a hill, shining, illuminating defeating the darkness defeating the darkness you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden first true light cannot be hidden listen to me true light cannot be hidden if you're living a life for jesus christ you're shining whether you want to shine or not whether you realize you're shining or not there are people that are around you there are people that are looking at you there are people in relationship with you and they see the glow and the shine of Jesus Christ in your life, even when you're not trying to. If you're in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Light cannot be hidden. Jesus said that a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. When it's shining, it's light, people will see. People will see. You, you ever seen a hitty? A, a hitty. <laughs> That's this new word, making it up every day. A city set on a hill. Have you ever seen that? Let's rein it back in. Focus. Focus, people. <laughs> that could have went a whole other different direction. But <clears throat> a city set on a hill. Have you ever seen that? It's a, there's a glow. Even if you can't tell or recognize exactly what it is, there's a glow from a distance. You see it from a distance. You might not be able to, to make out exactly what it is, but the closer you get to that, it becomes apparent, oh, that's a big old fancy city sitting on a hill, shining at the top of that hill. And so uh, we can't, we, we, we can't, we, we cannot hide the true light that is within us, that is Jesus Christ. That is Jesus Christ. This world needs us to shine. I need you to shine. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we need each other to shine, to shine. And so the first part is that a true, true light, the light of the world that is Jesus Christ, cannot be hidden. It cannot be hidden. And then the second, if you're a true light, you don't want to hide it. If you're a true light, a true follower, a sincere follower, an honest follower of Jesus Christ, you don't want to hide it. You don't want to hide it. See, what happens is, 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 is I'll just start at, at school. We'll go to school and, and it feels like we're the only ones that are serving Jesus Christ. 
And there's that temptation by the enemy. You just stay in the shadows. You're going to be ridiculed. You're going to be made fun of for being a follower of Jesus Christ. If you're a true follower of Jesus Christ, have confidence in the light that burns within you and that shines within you, and you shine bright every single day. Every single day. And we, and we, and we, we talk about our young ones and how they're to have the confidence in that, but guess, uh, us as adults are to have that confidence too. At work, when it seems like you're the only one, when you're the only one, guess what? We're to shine just as bright as we encourage our young ones to shine. <clears throat> if you have true light, you don't want to hide it. Verse 15, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. That all, that A-L-L, that's very important. That's very important. Anybody that is, that is in your presence that you come in contact with needs to see the light that is glowing with inside you through your relationship with Jesus Christ. The lights that, that would have been used, the lamps that would have been used in, by those in, in Israel at the time, they would have been a small lamp about the size of your palm, and they would set it on a stand to maximize its illumination, to maximize the effort, to maximize the effect of the light. They wouldn't hide it under a basket. They didn't want to dim the light, the lamp. You shouldn't want to be a dim light. You should be a, have a desire to be a bright, strong, shining light for Jesus Christ, even in seasons when it's not popular. True light should not be hidden, and true light cannot be hidden, and cannot be hidden. If you have been changed, let your light shine. If you have been changed through a relationship with Jesus Christ today, let your light shine. You know the song. You ready? I had to take a drink. This little light of mine. Huh? See, I'm, I'm trying out for the praise and worship team. This little light of mine. Come on. I'm going to let it shine. Ooh, some of y'all worse than me. I'm sorry. Some of y'all just got cut. No, I'm teasing. I am teasing. I am teasing. But that's what God wants us to do. He wants to let our light shine. He wants, to let, he wants us to shine, not be hidden, not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what it means. Don't be ashamed of the God that you serve. Don't be ashamed of your Savior that took a brutal beating and a cross so that we could have life. It's a blessing and an opportunity, and, 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 and it is special to have the opportunity to shine for my Savior, for my Savior. True light should not be hidden. True light cannot be hidden. If you've been changed, let your light shine. When we let it shine, others will glorify God the Father. It says that in this key verse right here of verse 16 of Matthew chapter 5. This is the key verse of hashtag shine let your light so shine before who who that's all humanity that's all humanity that's all of god's creation let your light shine before everybody the person that's going to ridicule you let your light shine let your light shine the person that's going to walk beside you let your let your light shine let your light shine let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and what? Who are they going to glorify? My light shining is not glorification of me. My light shining is not to glorify me. My light shining is to glorify my Father in heaven. To glorify my Father in heaven. When The moment that it becomes about me is the moment that the enemy's pulling me back into those dark places. Pulling me back into those dark places places and that's hard that's hard we all have somewhat of a selfish nature all of us do some more than others but all of us have somewhat of a selfish nature at times at times it does become all about me and it shouldn't and it shouldn't <clears throat> let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works Here, here's how this works here's how this here's how this plays out 
our good works, and I think it's deeper than just good works, because I can do a billion and one good things in this world. But if I'm not in relationship with Jesus Christ, that's, that's, that's unflavored salt. That's useless salt. I can give a million dollars to any charity or organization of your choosing, but I can do it from a place that's useless. I can do it from a place that's useless. I can do it from a wrong heart perspective. And it's useless in the eyes of God. I can give a penny from the right heart. And God can take that penny because he knows where that penny came from. He can multiply it. He can use it. He can bless it because of the, the way that it was given. The heart from which it was given. And so here, here's how this, it's, 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 not, it's deeper than, than just works. Our good works and, write this down, godly living. Godly living. Somebody say godly living. Godly living. Our good works and godly, godly living resulting from our changed lives. Resulting from our change. See, I can't live godly without God. Duh. I can be a good person, be a really good person, but I can't live godly separate from a relationship with God's son, Jesus. I can't do it. It's impossible. It's impossible. God is resulting from our changed lives. And here's what happens. Here's how it works. When my lives change, here's my purpose. Told you we'd get to it. Here's my purpose. God is living, resulting from a changed, from our changed lives, will impact others. We're to have an impact. We're to be engaging. We're to have an impact in this life and in this world. That's your purpose, an impact for Jesus Christ. An impact for Jesus Christ, because here's the reality and here's the truth. We're going to have an impact one way or the other. You're either going to have a positive impact or you're going to have a negative impact. There is no in-between. There is no in-between. You walked in here this morning, we shook hands, we, we hugged each other's neck, we told each other we were, that's a positive impact. If I hadn't gotten to you yet, I'll be right back out here. It's not because I don't want to. But then there's times that we can have negative impacts on each other. And we've got to limit the negative impacts. We've got to limit the negative impacts. And so when our lives are changed, we will impact others. Hopefully, here's the impact. Here's the purpose. And open up the door for their lives to be changed as well. I can't change you. I can't save you. I can't force you to be in relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't want to. That's God's business. That's God's doing. God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. That's their business. But man, I can help you light that path. I can, I can show you the door you need to knock on for that to take place. For that to take place. As our lives are changed, we impact others and open up the doors for their lives to be changed as well and become God-glorifying disciples of Jesus. That's what it means to shine. What does it mean to be the light of the world? That I am a God-glorifying disciple of Jesus Christ in every aspect of my life. In every aspect of my life. In every aspect of your life. When people look at Cornerstone Church, when people look at Cornerstone Church, the thing that they should see, God glorifying disciples of Jesus Christ. That's the purpose. That's what faith, family, and community is all about, is that we become more mature, that we become brighter lights in a community or communities so that we are God glorifying disciples of Jesus Christ and, and we lead others to become God glorifying disciples of Jesus Christ. Our C kids in the back, that's what that's all about. Teaching them the ways of God, unashamedly, the ways of God, so that they can grow and become and continue to become God glorifying disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. So it says here, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your, your Father in heaven. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8. Being the light means that we walk in the light. 
Being the light means we walk in the light, that we participate in the light, that there's action involved. Walking takes action, right? For some of us, a lot more. But walking in the light, being the light means walking in light. Ephesians 5 and 8 says this, for you were once darkness, for you were once darkness. There was a time when I was walking in darkness. There was a time when I was dark. And even in our changed lives in Jesus Christ, there are times that we find ourselves back in that darkness. There are times that we find ourselves depressed, fearful, worried. Right? Am I the only one? We find ourselves addicted. We find ourselves falling back into the darkness. But Ephesians 5 and 8 says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. I don't have to be depressed. I don't have to be depressed. I can choose to be. I don't have to be depressed. I don't have to be fearful. I don't have to be worried. I don't have to be addicted anymore. I can step out of the darkness into the light. And the only only reason I can do that is because of the light of the Lord. And then when I'm in the light, I need to walk as a child of the light. There's a specific reason why he uses the word child or children. Our children have unbelievable faith. Unbelievable faith. Right now, I can tell my kids, I want you to go do this. Now, Emma's at the age where she starts to, she's starting to question a few things. She's trying to find herself. That's okay. I gave her a little, little grace in that area. But for the most part, I could tell my kids, Amy could tell our kids to go do something. They're going to go do it without question. Without question. Without, without any, any knowing what, why or what, what's next. See, Jesus has, God has called, the Holy Spirit has called us to shine. We don't need to know why. We don't need to know why. We just need to arise and shine. We'll let God take care of the why. All we need to do is do it like faithful children. Just walk in the light like faithful children. The, the, the world seems in, uh, upside down, dark, depressing, all kinds. Of, but guess what? All I can do is pray about it and get up, arise, and shine. The rest is in God's hands. The rest is in God's hands. Isn't that releasing? Isn't that, that, I don't know. When I say it like that, it just releases a weight off of my shoulders. God, this is your world. I'm just passing through. I'm just passing through. I'm just passing through. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. John 8 and 12 says this. John 8 and 12 says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness. When we find ourselves being pulled back into the darkness, pulled back into the shadows, pulled out of the light, we need to remember John 8 and 12. Because Jesus tells us he is the light of the world, and if we're following him, We shall not walk in darkness. We shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. If I continue to walk in darkness, death is the ultimate outcome. Death is the ultimate outcome. But we can go from death to life through Jesus Christ. Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. This world is competing to light your path. This world is competing for your direction. This world is competing for your attention. But when we let and ask and beg Jesus to light our path, the Bible tells us that leads to life eternal. Anybody in here want death? Anybody in here want death? Anybody in here? 
See, I want my darkness to die so that I can step into the light. And that happens, that happens by accepting Jesus Christ and begging him and asking him to light your path. And his path leads to life, life for eternity, life for eternity. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And the Bible tells us there are, that, that, is, that is narrow is that way. And few people choose it. And a few people choose it. You have an opportunity right here today to choose it. If you haven't already, you have that opportunity to choose that lighted path that leads to life. That leads to life. And so, closing today. The aim, the goal of all that we do, the purpose of all that we do as followers of Jesus Christ is to bring glory to God. That's your purpose. We make it too hard. Your purpose is to glorify God in every aspect of your life. Every aspect of your life. Before I make a decision, before I participate in any activity, before I let my mind go back to darkness, I have to ask myself, am I about to glorify God with this decision? Am I about to glorify God with this thought? And, and, and I'll be the first one to stand up and tell you, thoughts are the hardest. Thoughts are the hardest. Because we all have the way we perceive things, whether it's right or wrong. We all have the way that we perceive things. And sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong. The first thing that we've got to ask in all of our thoughts is, am I about to glorify God if I think this way? Am I about to glory? Am I living in the light as a child of the light? And I don't have to understand it. I don't have to understand it. One day we will. Sometimes God lets us in on the picture while we're here. Some things we won't know till we reach that other side. Till we reach that other side. And so the aim, the goal, the purpose as followers of Jesus Christ is to bring glory to God. We're to make his name great. And honor him by the way that we live our lives. That's shining. That's what shining means. Honoring God by the way that we live our life. By the way that we live our lives. So when your team is not winning today, be careful if you're honoring God or not. I used to be really, really bad. So bad that Amy bought me these little Nerf footballs that I could throw at the TV. Not honoring God in any way, shape, or form in that anger. We're to point him as the source of excellence. That football team today should not be your source of excellence. We're to point him as the source of excellence, blessing, the source of blessing, the source of truth, the source of beauty, the source of justice, the source of holiness. The source of light. That is what it all points to. By shining like a city on a hill. We can glorify him and we can bring others along to glorify him. That's what Matthew 5 and 16 is about. Glorify God and bring others in to glorify him. When you go out and you invite somebody to church, it's not so Cornerstone Church can have big numbers. I could care less about numbers. God wants big numbers, we'll have big numbers. God don't want big numbers, we won't have big numbers. I'm good either way. I'm good either way. I don't really care. That's God's business. But what my responsibility is, is to invite, invite others to come and glorify God. Glorify God. <clears throat> Bring others along to glorify Him. We are to be glorifiers and we are to develop glorifiers that's what discipleship is i can give you a 12-step program on how to disciple somebody it ain't going to do no good unless they know you love them i can beat you over the head with god's word it ain't going to do no good until you know that i really care about you or you care about me we are to glorify we're to be glorifiers and we are to develop glorifiers we are to be disciples who love god we're to be disciples who love God, love the church. Yes, love the church. And that's not a building. Loving the church means loving each other. The people that go to your church, are we, are you, are we perfect? It's not always easy. 
It's not always easy. Love the church and love others. We are to develop disciples who love God, love the church, and love others. Jesus said just before this passage in 13 through 16, that there are blessings for those who live the way that he has called us to live. Anybody want to miss out on blessings? I don't want to miss out on blessings. I don't want to miss out on blessings. I want God to bless. It's okay to pray, God bless me. It's okay to pray, God bless my friends. It's okay to pray, God bless my family. But we have a responsibility. We have to position ourselves to be blessed. We can't walk in the dark and expect to be blessed. We have to walk in the light as faithful children, and that opens up blessings to us. We have responsibility. We don't want responsibility. We don't like responsibility. Shining is saying, I accept the responsibility that you placed upon my shoulders. The rest is in your hands, God. But whatever path you're lighting for me, I'm going to walk it. And I'm going to walk it confidently, 100% in you, glorifying you. In this passage, 13 through 16, Jesus says that we will be a blessing to the world when we live as his followers. May not be apparent right off. May not be apparent right off, but I can assure you there are people in this world that are searching for something. They may not even know what that something is. And you're going to be the light to show them the true light and what they're truly, truly searching for. So this morning, I have to ask, I have to ask you to pray. You can come down here and pray here in just a second. But I want you to pray and ask yourself, how will you shine in 2024? How will you shine in 2024? God is going to give us opportunities. He already has. Some of them, I knocked it out of the park. Some of them, in, in, in a month and a half, I've already failed. I've already failed. But I'm not going to stop because of my imperfections. I'm not going to go back into the darkness because of my imperfections. I'm not going to go back into the darkness because of my failure. I'm going to get up. I'm going to ask God to reignite the light. And I'm going to down that lighted path that he has. And so I want you this morning, whether you come up front and pray together as God's family, whether you pray at your seat, whether you're praying online, at home, or wherever you may be, ask God to reveal to you the opportunities to shine in 2024. Where can I shine? Maybe you're tired. Maybe you're walking in darkness. Maybe you have a relationship with God and you're, you're depressed and you're worried about this, that, and the other. You're fearful. Maybe you've got big decisions that, that, that are on the horizon and you're worried about those and you don't know the answer. You don't know the direction. You can ask God to shine his face upon you in every aspect of your life. If we'll do that, he promises he will shine on every aspect of our lives. He will not leave you in the dark. He will not leave you in the dark. But sometimes he just wants us to ask him. Sometimes he just wants us to talk to him. Sometimes he just wants us to walk like faithful children of the light. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to share your word this morning. We thank you for those that are here that had a desire to be in your house, to glorify you, to learn more about you, Lord, to praise you. Lord, we just pray that you take this, this message and this vision to shine for you in this, in this year and that, that you um, kindle that fire, that you continue to, to charge and recharge that light that you've placed through your Son, Jesus Christ, in all of us. Help us, Lord, to be the people that you desire us to be. Help us to be unashamed of your word, unashamed of your ways, so that we can shine in a lost and a dying world. Lord, and we don't want the honor and glory for any of it. We want you to receive all the honor and all the glory. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.